No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm in here with Skinny from the Nine. Fresh out the pen. What the fuck Yo, is going on? I just came home, man. They was trying to give me 25. Are you serious? Yeah, first degree kidnapping. <sighs> so you want to just tell me what happened or what? Yo, it's a crazy ass story. But like, basically, I had this, I had a friend that like, I know him for like 10 years. Like I know him my whole life. We grew up together and shit. In and, um, Staten Island? No, nah, New Jersey. New Jersey. Whoops. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and um, fucking... Um, I was thinking of somebody else. <laughs> Staten Island, Jersey, they're very close. I mean, you might take, uh, you, I, I, you take I, offense I, to that? I know why you were saying that. Fuck that nigga. Oh, God. Yeah, um, I don't even know who I was thinking of, but uh, Staten I know Island... Why you said that. Are you offended? Because Staten Island is like kind of... It's not Jersey. Jersey is a beautiful place. Joe Budden lives in Jersey. Yeah. I like Jersey. Okay, good. Um, all right. So what happened? You had a friend? I had a friend that I known like my whole life. And um basically this nigga um I was providing for him and shit. Sorry. What happened? I just gotta turn that down. Okay. I was like providing for him and shit, you know what I'm saying? I was helping him out. And then um I had to get back to business and handle and handle my shit. And um we went back to Jersey and then he broke into my house while we were sleeping and he stole one of my chains. And then, um, why did, why did he do this? Was he, is he like a drug addict or just, I think cause I'm not sure why he did it. It was more just like, I guess he was upset that like, I didn't want to like hang out with him no more. He got like attached to me. Okay. I don't know what it was. And like, he just caught me slipping, broke into my house, stole my chain. And then I didn't know he stole it. So the next day we was all looking for my chain. Like, where's my chain? Can't find it. And then, um, I just went about my day and I went to go like on a re- like some regular shit. We went to go hang out like we always hang out. And then we picked them up. And um, for some reason, I was just like, yo, let me see your phone. And he showed me his phone. And then I went into pictures and then it was it was my chain. And he took a video of my chain too, like trying to like clout chase. He was going to like post it for like, like trying to make it seem like he snatched it. Right. And Like hopefully somebody was going to repost it and shit. And then, long story short, we, we this is all of us in the car together. I was with my father and my brother and Big Baby. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, yeah. Big black guy. Wait, but so you guys, you got him in the car because you suspected him, and then you just said, let me look at your phone? No, we were hanging out. And then, I don't know, something just hit me like, yo, like, I don't know. Something just, like, hit me and said, let me check the nigga phone. Right. And then he had it in the, in the, in the camera. He, he definitely, like, he stole it. So then what did you guys do? Then basically, when I was like, yo, you stole my chain. And then he just started crying immediately, like bawling his eyes out. Like, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to do that. Like, blah, 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 blah. Like, I'll give you the chain back. Just please don't call the police. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, all right, man, just where the chain at? And then um, he basically, he was like, it's over here at my house. So then we go into his house. And then he's like, nah, it's over here. It's, it's, it's another place. So then we go going over there. And then, bang, it's not there. He said it's over here. So we go into, like, all these different destinations within, like, an hour. And you're obviously, like, really suspicious. Like, oh, this is there's something going on here? Yeah. And um, I got frustrated. And I knew he was with his girlfriend when he stole it because he's always with his girlfriend. Like, so you killed the girlfriend? Nah. <laughs> no, nah, nah, nah. And then fucking... Um, I mean, he might have admitted to it. <laughs> nah, hell no. Hell no. And then um, called the girlfriend, like, yo, I know so-and-so stole the chain. Like... Where is it? Mm-hmm. And then she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Blah, 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 blah. I just hung up on her. Bang. And then I get back to my house. And when we get to my house, there's cops everywhere. And basically, she called the police. And she said, like, I guess she told, well, on the police report, it was like um, she thought he was going to get harmed or something like that. So that's why she called the police. And then um, he, when the cops were there, I guess he, he had a warrant, I like, like a silly petty warrant. So he was like, don't tell the police that I'm here because they're going to uh, arrest me because I got a warrant, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, all right, man. And then I'm not, I'm not going to tell nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. We're just going to get the chain. I'm going to tell him to leave. We're just going to get the chain after. And he was like, all right. And then basically, he, uh, the cops were in the front of my house, so we parked in the back, and we, we went through the back of my house. And then when he sees the cop, he, like, whiz- he like mouthed, help me. He was like, help me, help me to the cops. <laughs> And this is in front of... And you got to be and, more careful and, who you hang out around. I know. And he's, like, he's like holding his ribs and stuff. Like no one even touched him. He's like holding his ribs. He's like wiping his eyes because like he was crying. And then like the cops arrested us. Oh. Me, my dad, and my brother charged me with first degree kidnapping. 
And then in the police report, it said when like he got in the car, like the police car, he was like, oh my God, man, you saved my life. They were going to kill me. That's what he told the cops. So then they charged me with first degree kidnapping. Wow. And it didn't even happen. Right. So then I had to sit in jail for three months. And basically everybody, like through the investigation and my lawyer and shit, everybody found out what like, really happened, the story that I'm telling you right now. Right. And then I just went home. But I'm fortunate because that shit could have took so much longer. Right. Because the court system is so slow. And I was like, I was scared as hell in there, man. I thought my whole life was over. I thought my career was over. I didn't know what was going to happen. Even so the though, charges have been dropped? Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm on probation. I was I was thinking before, I'm like, damn, if you still have to go to trial for this, you probably shouldn't be talking so much. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> hell no. Hell no. That's crazy. So you're just sitting, describe going in. Like, what's your first day in jail like? Or did you go straight to, like, you were into bookings and then nah, they ship you off no, or went what? I went to the county jail, Somerset County Jail. For three months? Yeah. Jesus Christ. And on uh, the first night, I was just like, fuck, man. Because I had a show to be at the next day. Hitco was throwing like a, like a, like some type of event. And it was a very important event for my career. Uh-huh. And um, I, I was like, fuck, man. Like, I'm going to miss it. And I ended up missing it. And I was just like so bummed out. I was so depressed that day. I was like, fuck, man. This is the start. I'm about to, if I'm, I already know. If I miss this, I'm about to miss mad more shit. I know this isn't going to work in my favor. I know I'm going to be here for a little bit. And then... um. It was just, it was bad, my nigga. They was giving niggas peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, fucking fish sticks. Every day? Every Monday. Oh, my God. Peanut butter and jelly. Grown-ass men eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. The worst. I remember because I was in Central Bookings in Manhattan one time, and it was like the peanut butter sandwiches with just the tiniest little speck of peanut butter, especially how I am now, man. Like, I'm hella picky about food. Not picky, but like, I need to eat good food. No, and then... That shit would drive me crazy. We sleeping on mats and shit, and then I fucking... Dealing with a bunkie and shit. This nigga be shitting and shit. Everybody shitting like the like. It's just well, it was bad, bro. It was bad as hell, my nigga. I hated that shit so much. And um, basically, everybody knew who I was when I got there, though. All the guards, like all the inmates, because it's my hometown. Mm. So like a lot of those people, like I seen like when I was growing up and shit. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? And um, this shit, it was it was it was a bad experience. That's crazy. It was a bad experience. Damn, and why did it take three months for this to to process? Because there's no bail in New Jersey. Oh. No bail at all. What happens is you get in trouble in Jersey, you go in front of a judge, and he decides if you go home or not. And if you got, like, a serious crime, like first-degree kidnapping, the judge is not letting you go home. Right. So I had to just sit there and wait. It was either take it to trial or just wait until... Whatever they investigate. And so this guy didn't like willingly drop the charges or anything. It was uh-huh. the, the cops kept investigating it and eventually he. Yeah, because he broke into my house. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He broke into my house again while I was in jail. So they did take him in for the warrant. Is he a drug I... addict or something? <laughs> I think so, man. I mean, that just seems like something that you wouldn't do unless you were kind of fucked up. Yeah, so he did get locked up on his petty warrant. Uh huh. So while we were all locked up, he broke into my house again, stole like $10,000 worth of shit. And I was fortunate that he left. They gave him like a court paper and he left it on my kitchen table when he broke into my house. He's definitely on drugs. So then my lawyer found out and everything and then like just threw him that like and everything. Everyone knew he was just bullshitting. So I just I ended up coming home. What the fuck? And so from your perspective, like this is probably like some of the first times that you were ever like posted on academics and world star and shit like that. And you have you're locked <laughs> up and you know that shit's going crazy on the Internet and you can't do anything about it. Right. How are you feeling? Dude, I was so mad because, like I said, I just kept missing shit. And I know the whole... I was scared at first that kidnapping, I thought... Because if you don't know the story, mm. I thought everyone was going to thought I did something to a kid. Mm. And then I was going to be labeled like that. So I was so worried about that. But then academics picked it up pretty quick. Some, like I heard from people on the outside. And like he basically... like It wasn't about a kid. So that was good. But um, I really just wanted to get out there and like explain myself. Because I didn't want this shit to like tarnish my name. Yeah, that was the weird part about it for me is that I is that like when it came out like skinny from the nine arrested for first degree kidnapping, I'm like, whoa! Like I hung out around this dude. I didn't know he was doing <laughs> shit like that. Like what the That's fuck? What I'm saying, yo, I know everybody had to like just look at it weird. Like I, some people thought it was fake at first. I know they did. Mm, that didn't really cross my mind. I but missed I, Rolling Loud. Oh. I was pissed off about that. Like I, oh, that was like one of my dream things to like perform at. I missed it. Damn. That's crazy. Bullshit, right? Were your la- was what was the label's reaction? Was the label looking at you like, "Oh my god, we signed a killer"? 
<laughs> no, nah, I was worried that they, they were gonna look at me differently, but you know, they held it down. They showed lots of love and support. They mm. didn't they didn't they didn't abandon me, so I appreciate that. I mean rap's one of the few worlds where you could like get arrested for like a heinous crime and it would still somehow be considered a good thing. Yeah. I mean, but I didn't have a heinous crime. No, no, no. But I mean like, you know, Gucci. Gucci was like a regular rapper, sorta. Of. I read a Gucci I read the Gucci book. Oh, that's good, right? Yeah. yeah. It was I was excellent, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really that big of a fan of Gucci. Like growing up, I knew who he was and shit, but like I was into like Eminem and like those guys. So, but then like I opened up my like perspective on things when I was in jail, and like I read the James Prince book. Oh art, really? Yeah, the Art and Science of Respect. I read, I read a little bit of Machiavelli. I wrote the two. I wrote. Uh, I read the Tupac book, The Rose oh, really? That Grew from the Concrete. Ooh, I no, I never poems read that. And shit. I should it was read good. That. Yeah, no, that that was good. It was powerful. Wow. You're almost making me want to get locked up so I could do more reading. Yeah, yo, I, I, yo, <laughs> that was actually like the good part about it. Like I really got to sit there. And like, just like, really think a lot about like the choices I've made leading up to this, leading leading up to that part of my life. And um, I really like now I'm out and like I have a clear focus. I really know like the things I'm supposed to do, the things I'm not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Like I can spot somebody like spot like a, a fake or a snake like a mile away, and like it's good. You know what I'm saying? And you just everything happens for a reason in life. Do you feel like? Because I feel like all I, this shit did was boost me. Right. Came out. I'm on fire. Gained like 50, 50 thousand followers in one day. Really. Yeah. Just from getting out? The first day I gave it came out. What the fuck? That video where I was like singing the, the, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, that happens actually a lot. Like when you think about it, like X got locked up and he blew up while he was locked up. That's what I was looking at too. You know? I was looking at, I thought about all that stuff and I was like, you know what? I'm on the right path. Like this is the path to being a legend. It's a weird, X is a legend. Rest in peace. Yeah. It's a weird thing where people sort of like take you more seriously or become more interested as soon as you're locked up. Yeah. Because they can't get any more shit from you. There's no new shit coming out. So they're like really tune in to like that. I don't know. It's a weird thing that happens yeah. to people's brains. Yeah, and I know everybody was, my brother was telling me, everybody was posting me, like, Complex Con, like, everybody. I was so souped. Yeah. I just wanted to get out there so bad. I and didn't I, even I was, tell you, but I got a huge free skinny from the nine back tattoo. Let me see it. Nah, nah, I'm going to show you later. <laughs> <laughs> but, is, so what changes do you feel like you've, like, had to make in your life? Like, I, I would say that this dude who robbed your house and left his uh, court appearance papers on the table, that that's probably the kind of person you don't really want to be chilling around. Yeah, honestly, I'm just uh, I'm staying away from people who need me. You know mm. what I'm saying? Stay away from people who need you, because those are the people that take advantage of you, and those are the people that get attached to you, and they don't have nothing going on for themselves. And I'm not trying to like offend nobody, but then like if you uh, you become there, like then then you have to take care of them. Mm. That becomes your responsibility. Yeah. Because they have nothing else to do. And this was like one of, because I see it all the time where like somebody starts popping off and they have like friends from early on. And then all of a sudden, like they just, you know, they just kind of like fall out of friendship with that person. And then that person gets so mad Take because personal. that person feels like I was your boy up until the exact fucking moment that you started to really blow up. And then you're going to leave me. But it's kind of like, well, yeah, you're a bitch. Like you're weird. Like I don't want you around me. Yeah, yeah no, I, I completely agree. That's exactly what's happened to me all, all now leading up to now. everything. I have no friends now. Like anyone I was friends with. Like, I'm not friends with no more because everybody had, like, a secret agenda. Everybody was trying to use me or just trying to gain something out of me. Really? And, like, it was, it, it just, it became overwhelming. I just got rid of everybody. Wow. I'm just, it's me and my brother all the time, 24-7. You know Josh, right? Yeah. Yeah, Josh. Josh needs some clout points. <laughs> yeah, follow Josh. Um, I definitely, yeah, that man, that's crazy, bro. That's, like, I don't know. It's just a wild thing for you to have to go through so early on in your career, you know? I know. It's like, I didn't even like, I was, I was just about to drop my project too. Mm. It's an evil world. Right. We were and, supposed to do an event for it right before this yeah, happened. Yeah, I know, man. I was so bummed out, bro. I was just like, fuck, man. Like, oh my God, yo. But I, I'm like happy now because I'm getting like more shit now done. Like, mm. I'm getting more shit accomplished now. Like, I just like, everybody wants to interview me now. Everybody wants to know what's going on. Everybody. So it's all good. Like, it's all positive. Wait, so your dad was there? Yeah. Did he get locked up for as long as you did? No. See, the thing is, they let they let my dad and Josh home, like, the same day. No, like, three, four days later. Why'd the they dinner. hold on to you? They thought you masterminded the whole thing? <laughs> yeah. Right. And they were trying to, like, gain clout off my name. Even the court system was trying to gain clout They because they arrested Skinny from the nine. Right. Like, they was not about to just let me leave. And then Big Baby, he's just, like, this big black guy. So they they, they definitely, like, just looked at him like, nah, like, y'all two both. No hair dye? Not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, I don't know. You think yeah, maybe it, it was very, it was very like, um, like sensitive when I saw because I, I was like, damn, yo, 
I, we all thought we were going to go home. I don't know why we thought that. We all thought we were going to go home. So then when the judge only let my brother, and we were all locked up together. So me and my brother were in a cell together, and my dad was like in the cell over. So we were all locked up together, and we were just trying to stay positive. And then when, when, they, um, when they just let them go, I, we all came back to the jail. They started packing their stuff. And it was so like, it was so depressing, bro, because I literally <sighs> saw my brother and my father just leave in front of my eyes. And I didn't know when the next time they, I was going to see them. And me and my brother are like this, and me and my dad are like best friends. And it, it, I started crying. Like, I was like, man, I don't know when I'm going to see you guys again. Even though, like, I knew I was innocent, it's just that whole thing where, like, you just don't know. Because people go to jail, all the, people get convicted oh, yeah. of things they don't do all the time. For sure. And, like, you don't know. The court system has no rush. They don't rush anything. They take their sweet-ass time. Mm. They had pushed, like, two of my court days back. Right. I, like, it, it was fucked up. And they don't give a fuck about the fact that, like, yeah, I got to get out. I got money to make. Like, yeah, this, this shit yeah. is not going to be here forever. I got to yeah. go get these bags. Exactly. <laughs> and then the guards, they were assholes, man. They, like, some of them were cool, but most of them were just, like, you're not going home till you're 40 years old. Like, For you real? Better, yeah, you better get comfortable. Why, why were they saying shit like that? Because... They only read the black and white, you know mm. what I'm saying? They read what the paper says. So, and those guys, they think their their shit doesn't stink. They think they're like perfect. They're like they never made a mistake in their life. Right. So they see like a kid like me, and they all know who I was because I'm from the hometown. All those people are from the hometown. So they see a kid like me, who finally became successful, who finally accomplished his dreams, and they're just COs, just stuck there doing the same shit every day. And they're like, oh yeah, we got this fucking faggot. Like, we got him now. Did you like? Uh, did you run into any like trouble while you're locked up in terms of people like giving you a hard time or anything? Or was it pretty nah, smooth? No, everybody was showing me love because everybody knew who I was and like a lot of people knew I didn't do it. So it was just like they were just like everybody was hoping I go home. Everybody was telling me you going home, don't worry, you going home. Like and you gonna look at this as like the best thing to ever happen because your career is gonna jumpstart after this. Right. I mean, if but at the same time, if you put somebody in a car and you drive them around and you don't let them out, even if they want to be let out, you basically kidnapped them, right? Absolutely not. No? What's the kidnapping part? You have to Kidnap, force them I, in? Yeah. If you come willingly... He didn't kidnap. try to get away. Yeah. If you, it, he was being intimidated, kind of, right? Kidnapping is me seeing you on the streets and grabbing you up and throwing you in the car. Right. And keeping you for, like, hours. He was along for the ride. He might have been scared, but he was... You it's know, called, he didn't try to it's leave. It's called luring. Right. What you're talking about is luring. Okay. Luring. Luring. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Uh, fuck. So now you're out. I do feel like they like, they were like, "Fuck, we can't get six nine, so we got to get this kid instead." They all asked me about six nine. I mean, I know like, it's a different it's state and everything, but I feel like there's like there's like something in the air because in New York they're like, "We got Cardi B sending hitmen to the strip club to beat bitches up. We got six nine doing God knows what. We can't get them for some reason. Well, we might as well get this motherfucker with blue hair at least." Skinny from nine. <laughs> nah, they, they were all. They were, I, I was yelling Treyway in there. You oh, know, really? They all knew what's up. That's cool. Ain't nobody want to fuck with me. Did you sign the trade with? <laughs> yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I heard they picked up uh, the shoddy guy today. Shoddy just, I was just on the phone with Shoddy. Shoddy's home. He is? Yeah, he did get, he um turned himself in for some light shit, but he's home now. Oh, okay. It wasn't anything too crazy? Nah. Oh, that's good. That man is a genius. That man's brilliant. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you met him. Uh, I don't think so. Nah, he's cool as hell, man. I feel like he probably want to kill me. Why? Uh, I don't know. 6 9 doesn't like me for whatever reason. Didn't you? You guys did an interview. Yeah, I've known him forever, but I feel like he like decided that he wouldn't fuck with me because I was dubbing him for like a year before I gave him that interview, and then he blew the fuck up, and then he was like, "Ha ha, you were ignoring me for a year before that." So that's why, uh, not a year, but like I was ignoring him, like asking me to do an interview for Mad Long. Oh, shit. But I did that to everybody. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't even like talk about that. That's none of my business. Why? Because that's your OG. Yeah, that's my OG. <laughs> That's when I bro. first met you, you had a photo with him. And I was like, oh, shit, that looks kind of valid. Yeah. Yeah. That was at the uh, Kiki shoot. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. So what have you been doing since you got out? How long have you been out? Like a few days? I've been out like four days. I've been fucking mad bitches. I've been um, getting mad head. I've been... Um, from bitches? From bitches, okay. yeah. I've been fucking mad bitches and getting my dick sucked like crazy. Um, I've been doing mad songs. Uh, did a lot of interviews. And um, I haven't really slept, like, at all. I've been up, like, 24 hours. Damn, like, every really? single day. Yeah. Wow. And then, like, the first thing on my mind when I wake up is, like, get my dick sucked. Like, I got to get my dick sucked first. And then I go and try to, like, do something productive, like, music-wise. Because three months with no pussy, you know what that does to a man? Not really. 
Going on and on, bro. I had to like smack my shit every night. To every go to night. Sleep, to go to sleep. While bro. this other dude's taking shits? <laughs> nah, he was asleep. It'd be, like, it'd, be like, it'd be like late night. It'd be like late night. Like late, late, late night. And you got to be hella low key. You can't moan. You can't be shaking <laughs> exactly. the bed. <laughs> I, had to like, I had to be like mad stiff. Like mad stiff. And then like finally after, it's like, all right, I can go to sleep. Oh, I got nut all over my hand. I can just go sleep. And then I was on the phone, like, talking to girls. Like, people, like, that, like, actually do care about me. And, like, the only thing I could tell them on the phone was, like, yo, like, I can't wait to get home and smash. Because, mm. like, this is just bad. So your sex drive is pretty high, huh? Yeah. No, now it is, bro. I'm fucking, mm. dude, I'm trying to fucking, like, everything. It turned you into a monster being in there? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 22. I'm about to be 23 next month. Yeah, when I mean, you're 22, 22, testosterone level's a lot higher. Really? I'm 34. Don't even work anymore. No, I'm just kidding. It still works great. But it's like, I feel like that's what's supposed to happen is that it's supposed to stop working so good at some point. Yeah. I felt like being in there, it was like, like, I don't know, like, because they kept moving. They kept moving my court dates back. And then the guards kept telling me I wasn't going home. There was one point in there. I felt like there was a conspiracy out to like get me. I felt like there was like, they were trying to do me like Tupac. I felt like when I did get out, like something bad was gonna happen like the moment i stepped out mm. like i really thought like some crazy shit was about to happen i started like losing my mind in there right like i stopped talking to people too because then like they kept pushing my court days back and like everything was just so like i just i just locked myself in my room at one point and just didn't come out for like the whole month really because i crazy. thought there was like a higher power out there like pulling the strings so how has your life changed now, though? I feel like you just want to avoid risk, right? Like, you just got to stay away from that bullshit element you were around. Yeah, absolutely. I'm staying away from risk because, like, before, like, I was, like, I guess you could say, like, I was in, like, small-ass rat beefs, like, with, with fucking losers that no one's ever fucking heard of. Uh-huh. But they get, like, 5,000 views on fucking their fucking music video. And um, I would, like, fall for it, you know what I'm saying? And, like, now I just have to be the bigger man because, like, I'm just, it's not even worth it. I just got to, like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, learning to just ignore all the hatred that people throw at you is a big part of it. Yeah, don't, don't, just, don't, just, just be the bigger man and, like, just let, let, let your actions speak, let your actions speak for yourself. Like, if you're successful, your success is going to speak for yourself. Mm. You got to stay out here, too. Fuck, being in Jersey, like, people break, being even able to, like, break into your crib and shit, like, you got to, you got to, like, being a housing complex type shit or something where you where they can't just like get to your shit. Yeah, do you know like anywhere I can go? Shit, move to Calabasas. Yeah. I mean, it's probably pretty expensive, but it seems no, pretty I, safe. Dude, I got like, dude, you know what I, you know, you know. You got the bread. Yeah, you did sign a big ass deal, huh? How's that going? It's going fucking great. You were like running through your whole your whole signing bonus buying a cup of noodles while you're locked up. Dude, I was buying <laughs> mad cup of noodles. That's all they give you. Yeah. Cup of noodles and um. What are the um the to- the chocolate? What was them shit called? Ding dongs. Ding dongs. That's what they got. Like you know what I'm talking about. Like I the, mean, the, that's just a random ass hostess cake. Yeah, I yeah, think. yeah, 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 yeah. And lots of oatmeal. That's yeah. what they had at the commissary, though. Yeah. Were you working out or anything? I was like at first I was doing mad push ups because like I wanted to like come out and like jaw real style, just buff as fuck. I know? wanted to get out and be able to get bitches like without them knowing I'm a famous rapper. I wanted to get bitches like, oh, he's pretty big. But like it didn't it went downhill from there because like I worked out for like two weeks and then I was like, you know what, man, fuck this shit. I if just, you want to get on steroids, I know a guy. I don't I, I don't want to get a little steroids, bit. growth hormone, get you in the tanning bed. You'd be straight up like poly poly D Jersey Shore type shit, man. Steroids make your dick small. Mm, no, it makes your balls small, but then they go back after you stop taking it. I don't want to take that chance. Mm, yeah. No, that's actually the problem. I did steroids when I was like 20. So you have small balls? No, but they did shrink for a little while and then they went back. But the problem actually is, the problem sounds a lot like what your problem is right now, where I wanted to fuck too much. Yeah. It made me like a fucking monster. I was like really wearing my girlfriend out at the time. Yeah. It was bad. Crazy. <sighs> um, <laughs> so, all right. What, what do you have like plan now now and like i guess we didn't even really do that much of an introduction who is skinny from the nine skinny from the nine is a rapper from new jersey who was doubted by everybody and made fun of by everybody i was a loser in high school i had no friends i didn't go to the cool parties i got made fun of all the time i would walk through the halls in high school and nobody would even acknowledge i was there um i i was completely alone i felt depressed and I just wanted to prove everybody wrong one day that like, y'all making fun of me now, but watch, I'm gonna make more money than every single one of you in the future. And I proved it, I proved everybody wrong. I mean, I made that happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, my music is more like 
dark, dark things that I went through, but with some light at the end, it's, it's all happy. Because I want kids, I want the youth, I want, even, even if you're grown, I want you to know that like, if, you're, if you're alone and you're going through some problems and you feel like depressed and you feel like you want to kill yourself, you can look at me as a symbol of hope and that as long as you believe in yourself, your dreams come true no matter what. That's what's up. So, damn, yeah. How much shit do you really have out at this point? You, only, you have like a handful of videos, right? Yeah, I got like six songs out. Right. I never dropped a full body, body of music. My first song was Love Blast. Yeah. Is that a big plan of yours, like, going forward, though, is just to, to like, work on the mixtape side of things? Yeah, I want to I wanna release lots of body of music because I feel like people sleep on me. I feel like other rappers in the industry sleep on me, and I feel like some people, fans, who, like, don't know the music side of me, they just know who I am because of my look and my face. And I feel like a lot of people sleep on my music, but that's because they haven't heard a full body of music. I'm actually, like, better than everybody, I think. Really? Yeah. Who do you compare yourself to? Nobody. I'm I'm the best. That's good. What happened to your hair while you were locked up? That must have been one of the hardest parts. Losing uh, your 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 dreadlock things or, my or braids. braids that you had before, braids. yeah. Nah, um, I took them out because um, I got bored as hell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they would have been so fucked up by the time you got out anyway. Yeah, and like I didn't want the judge to like look at me as a hoodlum. Mm. I wanted him to like maybe I got the blonde hair, so maybe he could look at me as Justin Bieber instead of like look at me as fucking Lil Wayne or something. Do you think it worked? Definitely, because he let, he let me go. Yeah. Do you think that like he had to let you go and he didn't want to, or you think that they were actually on your side by that point? They were on my side because after the truth came out, a lot of people like looked at me and was like, "Damn, like this is like a fucked up situation." Like even the district attorney, like he was just like at the end of everything, he was like, "Good luck, like I really hope you succeed." At the end of the day, they were all just doing their job, so I can't. I don't. I don't get. I don't get mad at anybody for doing their job. You know what I'm saying? Right. But there's still a big part of me that would want to be like, yo, you guys like owe me money because you locked me up for three months. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. That's why I had to take a plea because if you if they let you go like scot free, you can sue for like false imprisonment. Mm. And I probably could have. I probably if I would have took it to trial, I probably would have won. But then I would have missed like who knows how long, bro. I would have missed like maybe a year, two years, because there was guys in there that I was with. They were going to trial, and they hadn't even started. And it's like two years later. I was like, fuck that, man. I'm not waiting that long. I got to go. Man, I'm not going to Jersey. Fuck that shit. Yeah, don't go to Jersey because there's no bail. So you you will be fucked. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Damn. Shit. So, uh, yeah, what, what what's your plans for, like, uh, the immediate future? What have you been working on the past few days? Or what are you working on now going forward? I'm just trying Getting ahead. Yeah, I'm getting ahead. But I'm, I'm also, like... Really just trying to, uh, I want to release my first project, It's an Evil World, because that was supposed to be like the introduction of like, so people can know who I am. And like, now I feel like it's been too long. To, it, it's like, I have to drop it already. Like whether it doesn't have the right promotion behind it or not, because that has to come out because that's like the first chapter in my life. Now I'm on the second chapter in my life. I just went to jail and like all this other stuff. And like, I have hit records. Like I got like radio smashes that mm -hmm. I want to put out with like, I could like, with like bigger artists. But I can't put those out. I don't want to put those out yet because I want that first mixtape to really like, I want my fans to really like gravitate to me and like, this is who I am. Like, that's how it always is with the first project. The second project is where you go like, you know what I'm saying? You start working with everybody. Mm. And then the third project, you kind of like do some out of the world shit. And then fourth project, you like go Jamaican or some shit like Drake. Go Jamaican. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you that's just like Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Damn. That's cool though. Who, who you got songs with? Right now, I had to uh, jump out that with PNB Rock. We got another one. It's called Dripping Like Paint, but I'm trying to get somebody else on it. I, on my project, I got um, Fetty Wap, Too Fast. Um, I got um, this other thing with uh, Cap G. It's called Jet Lag. Nice. And um, I'm trying to get um, Lil Dirk, Lil Dirk, Auntie Grizzly hit me. I'm trying to do something with them. Probably going to do something like next week. If you reach out to Dirk for a verse and then it comes back and he's just talking about how drinking lean gives him diarrhea, are you going to be like, nah, you got to re-record that? Or are you going to be like, nah, that's hard? <laughs> nah, I'm going to keep that because drinking lean does give you diarrhea. Really? Yeah. I never really had that problem, but I feel like it kind of tightens you up. If anything, you might get constipated. Yeah, so you get constipated and then like later on you let it all out. and it's like No, nah, you get constipated and then you shit out a fucking tree trunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes down, bro. <laughs> That's hilarious. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking about that. You know, like the Walkhart font. 
I was thinking I was making sure this says walk art gives me the runs. Oh, you don't even know because you've been locked up so long that you don't know what that happened? that's like a really popular lyric. What happened? What oh, is that? The, the Gunna and Lil Baby put out a mixtape and the first song on it, Lil Durk says, walk art, give me the runs. <laughs> I forget though. It's like you're from another fucking country because you haven't been like I super know, up dude, close to I all missed, this. Ra- I missed yeah. everything, bro. I missed the whole Eminem and MGK thing. My oh. brother was telling me about that. Is life even worth living if you're not, not around for that shit? Man, yo. And it, g Easy was involved in it, right? Uh, g Easy hopped on MGK's shit a little bit and, and, and dissed him a little bit, yeah. yeah but then that. that was kind of like the precursor and to Eminem. Eminem came at like everybody. He said, that's also my brother was telling me. I didn't hear the one where he came at everybody. I couldn't find it. Yeah, on M's album, he, he mentioned a lot of people. He mentioned like Pump and Zan and all this shit. But, yeah. And my brother, told, he said he said something about Fetty Wap. And the day I, I saw mm-hmm. Fetty Wap put a picture, he was like, Eminem and Nicki are talking about me in their songs. I, don't yeah. know, I was so confused. I don't know. I mean, the weird thing about Eminem is like, are we just not going to see him for another year and a half? Because that's normally you what happens have, after like, he puts out an album. You have the tats right here, yo. Like, I kind of like... Well, bro, you were locked up so long, you didn't even see my fucking, my costume. Look at it. Oh, no. You were Eminem for Halloween? Yeah, look. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I did an exhibit interview, which was that's a nice touch, crazy. but... Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this is probably. I the, missed Halloween. That's I was the best so, photo. Yo, that's fire. Don't I look like Eminem? Yeah. I was pretty hyped because I'm like, man, Eminem is like the most valid white boy in the history of rap. No, that's like my favorite rapper of all time. Oh, you know I should be Travis Barker next year, because then I don't have to cover the tattoos up. He got hella tattoos. Yeah. If anything, I should draw on more. Um, fuck. All right. Anything else that we uh, need to know? Um, my mixtape's gonna drop like very soon, like this month. It's an evil world. And it's gonna blow everyone's mind away, and um, I'm not, I'm not worried about what anyone else has to say about me. I'm just gonna continue moving forward and shit on everybody in this industry. I'm not here to make friends. I literally like, fucking hate everyone. Really? In the beginning, when I first got involved, I was so like, I wanted to like gravitate and like chill with people, but like now I'm like the loner and like I fucking hate everyone. Damn. Yeah. So everybody out there, watch out! Or this motherfucker's gonna throw you in a car and drive you around. <laughs> <laughs> can we laugh about it yet yeah no we can I, I laugh about it all the time i mean if it really went down like you said it went down that shit is so fucking crazy and just like ridiculous man how do you feel about the dude that actually like lied on you like i don't care like because he's probably like not doing nothing with his life yeah i mean he sounds like a drug addict to me yeah i don't know allegedly Fuck that. he's not a rapper just not, some random just some random dude crazy You've been smoking big kush since you got out? I don't smoke. Oh, you're over. You, you never did? No. Nah. Okay. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. I don't do anything. Damn, we love a positive icon. I drink, like, sometimes. But, like, I've never even, like, had a cigarette. No black and miles. No nothing. I like, yeah. like that shit's whack. We got to give this man a Newport. That shit fire. <laughs> Hell no. You're going to love it. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Well, bro, it was good to have you on here. I'm very uh, glad that we... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what the last thing I wanted to ask, and I probably should have said it before, though, is like, what, how do you feel about the allegations from people that you were snitching? Yeah, that's just like goofy as hell because like anybody with like knowledge would understand that like I'm not a snitch because I can't even talk about like that situation because like it's still going on. So this was that's, a different case. Understand. Yeah, the, the, the video that everyone talks about, mm. that's still an open case. And like, I can't talk about it so that's why I'm so brief about it. But like when it's finally over, people will understand that like I I'm not I I didn't snitch on anybody. Like what happened in that video was ba- the ba- basically a house got set on fire. That like that's all I'm gonna say. And then like in that video, I was asked, "Have you ever seen a flare gun shot before?" And I said, "Yes." And then they said, "By who?" And I said the name. But that had nothing to do with who set the house on fire. You get what I'm saying? I didn't, no one went to jail. I was the last one. There was like 10 people involved mm. out of every, I was the last one to get involved and I wasn't even there. I was just like, people just threw my name under the, I, I don't know why. Somehow my name had got brought up and I wasn't there. I was just hanging around with the wrong crowd. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And then now that like, and that was going on for so long, like the whole town knew about what really happened. But like, now that I got famous, the people that like, were like, hating on me and jealous and like said that I abandoned them they had reached out to that fucking faggot and they fucking had sent him the fucking video to try to make me look bad to like play the media to like Mm. you know what I'm saying like people just try to like manipulate the system and like just try to ruin somebody who's doing good no matter 
Because they're just jealousy. It's just jealousy and hate. Because people aren't paying that close of attention. So it's like if you have a video of somebody like, oh, look, he's talking to the cops. It's like, well, there's all kinds of situations in which if you were arrested and you were thrown in a fucking, you know, a booth and you had to talk to the cops, it's like, yeah, you got to talk to them a little bit. But it's not like. Yeah. And I was like, that was my first time ever getting like I was only 18 years old. I didn't fucking know, like, ask for a lawyer or like this Mm. and that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what the whole the first what happened now, I asked for a lawyer immediately. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I learned from my mistakes. Mm. There's these people, niggas is calling me a snitching shit, but I, their favorite rappers be getting beat up, getting a chain snatch. They can't go to their own hood. They can't even leave. If they're from the West Coast, they can't go to the East Coast. From the East Coast, they can't go to the West Coast. Like, niggas is really pussy out here. But y'all, y'all calling me a snitch, but I do whatever I want. And I say whatever I want to anybody. And nobody will do nothing. Yeah. You heard it here first. Shit. Anybody you want to thank? Anything you want to say before we wrap this up? Um, when I was leaving jail, one of my homies had just got locked up and, uh, I used to like look up to him, like with this rap shit. Mm -hmm. So free Nino, uh, free big baby. He should be home Friday. Uh, shout out my brother. Shout out my dad. Treyway shit. Shout out Hicko. And, uh, yeah. Fuck the haters. Treyway. Fire. Hey, I appreciate you coming through, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Skinny from the nine. This has been No Jumper. Uh, check us out on YouTube. SoundCloud and iTunes are coming back soon. Head on over to NoJumper.com if you want to support. Shout out my boy Tyler Grosso for this beautiful crew neck that I'm wearing right now. Yeah. Shout out Givon Shea for uh, this one. Is that $1,200? As, as, as soon as I left. What's that $1,200 hoodie? Yeah, it is. This is like, this, yo, this is the first hoodie I bought. This is the first piece of designer clothing I bought when I signed my deal. Wow, really? Yeah. The only reason I'm even thinking that I know that is because one time Lil Xan came over and he was wearing like a similar one and I gave him a hoodie and he took that similar hoodie, like the Givenchy hoodie off and put on mine and he's like, here, you can have this. I'm like, wasn't this like incredibly expensive? This costs like 30 times more than mine. And he was like, <laughs> hey, it's okay. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I, I know. I'm like the same way. I don't really be caring about like clothing no more. Like it's whatever. I got I got twenty thousand ten thousand dollars worth of shit stolen from me. So it's like Ooh. now at this point it's like material items are just material items. That's okay, crazy. Was... This shit was free, but it's supposed to be forty dollars. What? This crew neck that I'm wearing right here. Actually everything I'm wearing is free, I'm pretty sure, besides maybe these socks. Those might have been like ten bucks for the pack. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> I, this coffee was like two dollars and thirty cents, I believe, too. I'm just gonna throw that out there. You see this? Yeah, how much you spent on that? A lot. Enough that enough that you got to be careful rolling around with that thing on. Nah, it's fake. It's fake for real. Shut up. It's fake. Where the fuck would you get something like that fake? No, nah, I'm joking. But now watch, everyone's gonna we're gonna play this back, and everyone's gonna say your Rolex is fake. Well, actually, I have a diamond tester <laughs> right here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, appreciate, it, man. Thank you. I'll holler at you. Let's go.